Bonjour, Dobry Den. Welcome to Weekly with Olivier Vidrin. I am Olivier Vidrin. We spend together 20 minutes to discuss about what is happening in the world and in Ukraine. But let's start uh, with my first part. Uh, the inaugural address, the Trump's speech. Yes, uh, during this uh, speech, we, we saw some key points of the new policy of USA and of the policy of Donald Trump. First of all, if we can do a summary of this speech, a few words. America first. What does that mean? That means Roberts. some isolation of USA and USA now will take care only about its own interests. And also, what does that mean? That means maybe some problems with NATO, some uh, problems to support Ukraine, And uh, you know that uh, Donald Trump uh, is, uh, a, is not in favor of the European Union, is not in favor of NATO. He said that NATO is an old organization. And during this speech, I, uh, I was very afraid because this is a very, I can say, uh, a populist speech. America first. Uh, America first. America, okay. And what about the value of USA? What about democracy, freedom? What about the values of the father founder of USA? Nothing about that. Only populistic words. America first. That's very bad for democracy and that's very bad for USA. We will see what will happen with Donald Trump. We were waiting. Uh, but this speech of Donald Trump is a very bad news for democracy all around the world. And I want to speak also uh, about a very interesting fact. EU escalates its campaign against Russian propaganda. Oof, that's a good news. You know, uh, we took several, uh, I can say, a long time uh, in the EU to understand that the Russian propaganda was, is, and will be a big problem for the European Union. And we started to take care about that. And now, really, because of the new election in France, in Germany, in Netherlands, we want to face the Russian propaganda. Yes. You know, The influence of Russia and during the election in USA is only the first step. Now, they, they did that and they had a success in USA in the influence of the US election. And they are now doing that again in France, in Germany and in the Netherlands. And that's why the EU now escalates its campaign against Russian propaganda. Because we want to save our democracy. We don't want some Donald Trumps in France, in Germany, in Netherlands. No, we want to be a democracy and we want to face uh, populism. And that's good news that EU now a strong, big, and very sad event. The Conference of the Europe of Nations and Freedom Group, Saturday, 21st of January, in Koblenz, Germany. What is this group? What is the Europe of Nations and Freedom Group? This is a group who uh, take all the populist parties In Europe, in this group, you have Marine Le Pen, you have the representative of the Netherlands populist group, you have the new fascist party of Germany. They are in this group. This group is a group of influence of, of populism in Europe. And they had their own meetings. 
The 21st of January in Koblenz. They are pro-Putin, they want to destroy the European Union, and they are against the European Union. At first, they want to, uh, they want to support the Brexit, they are supporting the Brexit, they will, they will do everything to have a new Brexit in the EU. And one of the biggest, uh, I can say, the biggest message of this, uh, this, um, this event of um, this group is really now, you know, they are, uh, they are on the way to, uh, to organize their, their, their strategy. They are on the way to destroy our uh, European values. They are on the way to destroy democracy. But, you know, uh, I, am very, I am very optimistic because because of uh, Donald Trump's election in, 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 um, in USA, because of those uh, groups in, uh, in, uh, in Europe, now we can see in USA, we can see all around the world, and in Europe, some persons, some citizens are organizing a front against Trump, against populism. And that's really the good news. Now we are waking up. We are waking up. We don't want a Donald Trump in Europe and in USA. They are also waking up. For example, and that's be, that will be my last uh, uh, subject, the Women's March on Washington. Thousands and thousands of women, men, were after the, the day after the, the speech of uh, Donald Trump, on Washington, and not only on Washington, on all around the world, all around the world. Yes, that's good news. Thousands of thousands of women and men all around the world face, want to face uh, the Trump uh, ideas, want to face populism, want to face uh, a person who think that women is not equal, want to face a person where, who is against all the minorities, black minorities, want to face a new fascism. Yes, this is a good news. This is a very good news, this women march on Washington and all around the world. Yes, people all around the world, people are waking up are waking up because they know they can lose their freedom, they can lose democracy, women can lose equality, and uh, we have to fight for that. And that will be, I think, one of the biggest consequences of Donald Trump election, the revival of democracy freedom, human rights, the revival of values, humanitarian values. I am very happy today to receive as a guest Alexander Kara, Ukrainian diplomat and expert of the think tank Maidan of Foreign Affairs. Hello, awesome. welcome Alexander. Then uh, you are very famous uh, Ukraine expert. Uh, we can see you in a lot of TV channel in, in Ukraine and abroad. And I want to speak about you about several things. And at first, the first one is uh, you know the new U.S. president has given his inaugural speech. And uh, what can we read between uh, the lines of this speech? Firstly, uh, there is not much uh, that we haven't expected uh, to hear from his inaugural um, speech. Uh, he was uh, actually strengthening his messages uh, that he used during the campaign. And uh, up to two-thirds of uh, his uh, parts of the speech were dedicated to the national, to, to domestic problems and, and nationalistic mood. Uh, just something like 15% uh, of his speech were dedicated to the world. Uh, it's strangely he didn't use any any words like democracy or freedom or uh, he didn't mention the pivotal role of uh, or indi indispensable role of the United States that his uh, pre predecessors uh, was using. Do you think in that in this in this speech he, he, he forgot the the messages of the father founder of USA? 
Well, actually, uh, uh, according to the, those who uh, are also real authors of the speech, I mean his uh, closest aides, uh, the Mr. Bannon, for example, they were referring to um, Andrew Jackson. And uh, uh, actually, his agenda was uh, anti-establishment, and actually uh, Trump w was trying to play this card, even though some uh, dozen of uh, dozen percent of his uh, team are uh, billionaires, and uh, we haven't seen such amount of billionaires in Obama administration. It was none of them. And and even in, in uh, George W. Bush uh, Jr., we haven't seen such amount of... Uh, but this is so about there is rhetoric. It's not a real uh, yes. anti-establishment movement. This is not a real anti-establishment movement. That's right. We know that, and I am agree with you, but this is a part of populism also. Lie, always lie uh, for some economic interest. And uh, uh, everybody uh, who uh, were waiting for some change uh, against the establishment, they will, be, they will be very disappointed. And I am, I am agree with that. Yeah, sure. There is no solid support of uh, Mr. Trump. Uh, the, the, those guys who uh, voted for him, even though they're big in numbers, mm -hmm. but uh, they voted for several uh, ideas, different ideas. So they do not share all his uh, ideas in, as a package, as in an opposition political platform. And that's why uh, I see that uh, the, the, his support will be fragile and he will be shaken in, in the nearest future because all his slogans, it's impossible to fulfill even though he vigorously began to, uh, to fulfill them in the first day. That will be very difficult to manage all those contradictions, yeah? That's right. Mm -hmm. then, um, then we are talking about the Trump administration. There have been Senate hearings uh, of the candidates for the Trump's administration and some of them were even approved. What to expect from it? Well, we, uh, we, we should talk about two things. Uh, mm -hmm. First, about the uh, candidacies, about the, uh, the personalities uh, that he engaged in his team. And secondly, what uh, sort of the system or hierarchy between them and uh, communication? Who will have uh, Mr. Trump's ear to, to give he, him an advice? And uh, this is the most, uh, the most secret thing at the moment. We will see it in the first, uh, in the first uh, crisis that would appear soon uh, with I mean, foreign policy crisis or internal policy. Crisis. But we have some, some contradiction here also, uh, as we said. Uh, we have the General Matisse, who is uh, the Secretary of Defense of US, and is really uh, against Putin. He said that Putin is a bandit. On the other way, we have other uh, Secretary who are, uh, I cannot say pro-Putin, but in big business with Russia. And how he will uh, conceal it, uh, how he will deal with that? First and foremost, we should uh, keep in mind that uh, each and every president and his team is uh, pro-American. It's mm -hmm. not pro-Putin or pro-Ukrainian or European. And they will uh, proceed with the uh, national interest as they see. And uh, certainly Mr. Uh, Tillerson, who had a business dealing with uh, Putin and with, with, with uh, Russian businesses, uh, he is favoring Russia. And he understands that there is a huge economic potential uh, in, in Russia. But at the same time, during his hearings, he, um, he said clearly that he does not accept the uh, annexation of Crimea and the, the, these things that uh, Putin are doing in Donbass uh, currently. Uh, I, I, you mentioned uh, the Secretary of Defense, and yeah. actually it's one of the strongest, strongest foreign policy figures. Mm -hmm. He has a huge experience, again, in combat experience. The, he's a strategist and big thinker, and actually he's really, really mature in the foreign affairs. And I believe that uh, since Mr. Trump said that the military might should be uh, improved uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the strength, and uh, uh, Mattis will, will lead uh, this team, and he will be able to uh, shape uh, foreign policy as well not just, uh, just uh, proceed with what Mr. Tillerson would uh, advise and uh, to force. Then, then okay, uh, then what the policy toward Russia and Ukraine should we expect? But that's, that's, that will be my next question. But do you think that now uh, we, we can see maybe some possibility of, not I can say a love affair, but <laughs> between, between Putin and Trump and very quickly, maybe we can see a big opposition between uh, Trump and Putin. Well, we will see uh, what to expect because uh, at the moment uh, it seems that uh, the Trump administration is ready with some uh, drastic moves in, in towards China, towards uh, uh, the Asia in general or Middle East, but uh, not towards Russia. They're trying to uh, to begin with, uh, let's say, with a blank page uh, mm. to, to, to talk to Mr. Putin. L like every president of USA at the beginning, right. they, 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 uh, they said, like Obama, we are ready to work with Russia. They were very optimistic. and. 
each time Russia. That's right. When when uh, Bill Clinton was in power and the, the, the and actually uh, the uh, independent Russia emerged, he was trying to engage into the Western structures and uh, to, to to put uh, President Yeltsin at the table of mm -hmm. the great powers. Uh, and then we saw uh, the Chechen war and brutal, uh, barbaric uh, Chechen war. Then, if we are talking about uh, Mr. Uh, Bush uh, Jr. Uh, we saw uh, we, we saw sort of um, uh, rapprochement between each other, and then the the cold uh, cold relation began to appear. During Obama administration, we've seen uh, the aggression of Russia against uh, Georgia. Unfortunately, Obama administration did not react it in the proper way, mm -hmm. and actually, it's paved the way uh, for the Russian aggression again and against Ukraine, and uh, mm -hmm. would yeah. cause uh, more trouble if the West uh, to step down from the supporting of Ukraine. But you and me, we know that the only uh, can say democratic transition in Russia was during two or three years between nine. 1991 and 1993. Oh, that's right. Uh, it's not uh, actually... after that we have all, uh, we have the comeback of the post-Soviet mentality of imperial mentality. Only during two years, Russia tried to be a democracy. Yeah, and one of the reasons for that is uh, we just we've seen we witness. I mean, not we, but our uh, fathers witnessed the defeat of uh, Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. and then there was a uh, uh, denazification, and Germany became an integral part of the Western civilization based on the rule of law, human rights, and other stuff. And it's not the case with Russia, who is, uh, now, at the moment, we see the is trying to glorify uh, the uh, the uh, NKVD, the secret police of Soviet Union, Stalin, uh, committed I mean. uh, huge crimes against uh, its own people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stalin and uh, even so uh, terrible figures as uh, John the Terrible uh, mm -hmm. of the 16th century who just, you know, who just uh, sank the, uh, the country in and blood. The, and the father founder of the KGB, of the NKVD, this uh, very famous... Yeah, just uh, um, uh, Dzerzhinsky, yes. Alex Dzerzhinsky. Yeah, they're just, just killers mm -hmm. and they are uh, heroes of the, of the contemporary Russia. And what... what uh, I, have, I have more questions, but what policy toward uh, Russia and Ukraine we, should we expect in this in this period? Oh, certainly, uh, Trump administration will try to find the the common ground, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he noticed that uh, it's possible to seize the sanctions and to agree on some Russian demands if uh, Russia agrees on the nuclear uh, nuclear disarmament. And actually, it's interesting. Just recently, the uh, nuclear science uh, scientists of uh, the United States uh, uh, just. Put 30 seconds to the uh, midnight, the so-called uh, doomsday uh, clock. Mm. So they believe that with uh, the ideas of Trump to strengthen nuclear arsenal and with Russian uh, belligerents, uh, it's possible uh, to have the nuclear war. And actually, it refers the, the first time since 1984, when the, there was a mm. high of the Cold War and uh, there was possibility of of, of such a uh, trouble. So we will see it, uh, an attempt of uh, Mr. Trump to negotiate with Putin uh, some uh, big agreements, uh, no, security agreements between, between the two countries. If they fail, uh, there is no way uh, for Mr. Trump but to, uh, uh, to step back to the policy possibly of the Reagan uh, era. Mm -hmm. I mean the uh, containment of Russia, not the uh, aggression against Russia, mm -hmm. because you know, the United States are mm -hmm. not interested in, mm -hmm. in, in Russia, in aggression mm -hmm. with Russia. They're yeah. interested to have it as a part of the Western civilization, Western economical system, and to help uh, the Americans uh, to solve the pr problems, for example, with international terrorism or climate change and other stuff. And so uh, I believe that it's, it will fail because uh, Putin, there, there is no, nothing Putin can propose to Mr. Trump uh, uh, in, in return of uh, you know, giving up on Ukraine. Even though I don't believe that Mr. Trump this would decide to, uh, you know, to, to, to provide uh, such, such a gift for Putin. At the same time, I should say that uh, it's not uh, in, in the mind of Ukrainian people to to be, you know, part of the uh, to be a, a, an object, not the subject of international affairs. So I, I believe that uh, there is no objective uh, environment that uh, Mr. Trump will, would succeed in negotiating with Putin a good deal. And, uh, and and at the day, at the day um, sorry. At the end of the day, uh, they will uh, they will be in much colder in much colder relations than yeah. before. I, I, I totally agree with uh, of this point of view uh, with this point of view. And last question in few words because uh, this is the end uh, of the of our interview. 
what type of strategy Ukraine needs to secure its interest in a few words? Well, uh, actually, Ukraine should uh, concentrate on itself, on its uh, ability to uh, be a uh, resilient country, to, to uh, sustain itself economically, politically, and so on. So we need more democracy in our political system, and it will give us an ab ability to withstand the Russian aggression in long term, not just uh, w what happened in, in Donbass or occupied Crimea, but in long term, because I don't believe that the, uh, not just the Putin's, but the Russian elite's uh, vision of Ukraine, uh, not an uh, independent country and that should be with, with Russia or under the Russian influence uh, so they will proceed with this and so we need to be ex to, to expect that and to be ready to withstand this pressure and to integrate uh, into the uh, Western civilization we belong to by our values and by our, our mentality thank you Alexander thank, thank you. you thank you thank for, you for this me. very interesting interview too short uh, but I think uh, you said uh, I think the most important things. Okay. Thank you very much and, thank and you for having uh, me. see you soon. You are always welcome. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed those 20 minutes together. And uh, have a nice week. See you next Sunday. Goodbye. Do Vachinia. And remember what Winston Churchill said during the Second World War never give up. Mm -hmm.